Hello everybody and welcome to this little video that I'm making um, just to introduce the Purple Prayer Book which um, a good number of us have recently um, had placed into our hands and which I hope will guide us through our daily prayers over the whole of the year rather than us having to print out little bits and pieces everywhere this little book um, should have in it just about everything that we need. So if you have got one of these already, you might like to have it in front of you. If you haven't got one, I will pop a link um, in with this video, in the blurb of this video, to where you could get one from or equally to the apps which will contain the same um, material that we will be using. We will be using this for morning prayer, which is on our Facebook Live, but it does also contain the liturgy for evening prayer, which might be a practice that some of you might like to take up um, by yourselves. So here we are. So this is called Services and Prayers for the Church of England and it comes from um, the um, Archbishop's uh, Council um, and a particular um, stream of liturgy called Common Worship, which is where, um, uh, which is the most recent revision really of the Church of England's um, liturgies and worship. So it's an authorised liturgy of the Church of England. Um, as you will see inside on the contents page, it's all very simple. You can find everything you need. So on page one, you from page one you'll get morning and evening prayer in ordinary time page 31 is where you're from page 31 onwards is where you'll find morning and evening prayer in seasonal time then on page 143 you will find um, set intercessions and on page 165 you will find the psalmody which is a collection of psalms now it's worth noting that in this book uh, it doesn't contain all the psalms. They've just picked out ones that will be particularly... It contains a good number of them, but not all of them. So um, if you come across the psalms, if you wanted to read all of the psalms, or perhaps the lectionary is pointing towards a different psalm, then you may need to pick up your Bible at some point. So first of all, I'm just going to take you through what happens with morning prayer. So in morning prayer, we have an opening response... Then we have a prayer of thanksgiving or a suitable hymn or an opening canticle. And then we go into um, the saying of the Psalms, the recitation of the Psalms. Then there'll be a Bible reading and a gospel canticle. And then we'll have our intercessions, a collect, the Lord's Prayer and the conclusion. In this um, form of a liturgy, we go through all the things that um, that we would hope to do at the beginning of our day. This is how we set our day, um, consecrate it and offer it to God and Christ. Um, and so uh, some of these things can be left out. They don't have to always all be done in all. If you find that you are short of a little bit of time, um, it's perfectly fine to drop a reading or to only say one psalm. Equally, at other times, um, we do the whole the whole lot because it takes you on a journey, a journey of beginning to offer your day to God, to draw yourself into his presence, to hear his holy word, to give thanks for his presence in our lives, and then into thinking about others, about using our prayer, our time with God, our relationship with God for the wider witness. So it's love of God and love of neighbour, um, and the liturgy kind of takes us through that. The second dimension of these liturgies is the fact that you are never praying alone. Even if you're saying these prayers by yourself in your um, in your room, um, there will be somebody else somewhere praying using this liturgy. There is a great sense of that wider communion. Um, and that is something I think we've learned a lot about over these um, months and weeks of lockdown, is that actually we have been bound to one another in prayer. And it's been a very tangible and important thing for us to newly appreciate. So there are lots of notes which um, you can go and have a good read of if you would like to um, that will just give you um, uh, some further insight. But then you can see here for ordinary time there is a form of morning prayer which is form one and morning prayer form two. Um, I've had a look at these and as far as I can tell I think it's just a variation so that the structure slightly changes on a fortnightly cycle. Um, so what I think we plan to do with the live um, stream of um, prayers is to use form one one week, then form two, and then we'll go back and forth, back and forth. But if you're praying by yourself, it doesn't matter. Just choose whichever one um, fits, be fits best with you. As we go through, um, as I explained, so we have the opening and the, um, the thanksgiving. Then we have those wonderful words of opening. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. And then we go into the psalmody. 
And so this is where your ribbons become very important. So basically this has two ribbons and you may want to find yourself an extra bookmark. It is always as well to bookmark with a ribbon where you are because you're going to have to flip later on in the book. So make sure you have your purple ribbon there. And say if we're going to use the psalmody, which is um, pointed out here, then we will turn to that in the back. Now, it may be that some mornings the psalm that we use is the one that's set in the lectionary, but equally, these are OK to use. We can use these on a cycle as well. Um, so we may well use a psalm that's in here, in which case the intercessor, the, the person who's leading the prayers, will guide you towards the page that's relevant. Or otherwise, it may be a different psalm and you just can allow the words to float over you. So say we're going to use Psalm 8, which is 171. And if we're preparing the book before we actually begin our time of prayer together, then the yellow ribbon, it doesn't matter which colour you use, but the yellow ribbon, you might want to put that in there because then it's all ready to go to. So then you can flip from your purple ribbon to your yellow ribbon and back again. So we always say the psalm. Um, and if you're at home, feel free to join in with the whole of the psalm or just listen and read as you listen. Um, or maybe just pick up the even verses. Um, it's entirely up to you how you engage with it. And then at the end, there is the doxology, which is the final words that we use at the end of the psalm. And then we move into the scripture reading. Now, traditionally, with morning prayer, we would have an Old Testament reading, then what's known as the Old Testament canticle, and then we would have a New Testament reading, which is then followed by the seasonal um, responsory, um, which, which you, you have become familiar with, no doubt. Um, what we're going to do here, there are some set short readings in here, which, you, which we are very um, welcome to use. They are appropriate for the time of year um, and each season has its own um, collection of short readings that can be used. Or it is also possible to use the lectionary, which gives a wide range of readings. Well, it kind of follows scripture in more detail and more depth over the year. Those of you who've been joining us for morning prayer recently will have picked up on the fact that we have been reading some rather hard passages from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And that is what happens when you start to say daily prayer using the lectionary. It, it embraces the whole of scripture. Um, that includes the good bits and the bits that are less palatable. But actually, it's really important um, that sometimes we don't just dwell in the bits that are comfortable, that actually we are caused to question, to uh, query, to be troubled by the words of Scripture. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to be troubled to the point of which we accept everything literally and without um, without any questioning. But um, it does mean that we do sit and listen and don't dismiss things just because they make us uncomfortable. However, if at morning prayer there is a reading that has troubled you, um, that is one of the things that your parish priest or perhaps your um, lay readers are there for, um, who will be absolutely delighted at any point to unpack a passage of scripture. Um, often on a Sunday we get to do this in the sermon, so often we can name an elephant in the room and unpack the passage of scripture, but that's not so possible at the daily offices. However, if something has troubled you or actually you're wondering, actually, what am I to make of that? There are resources online, uh, which um, I certainly could point you towards or have a chat with you um, if you would like to. Sometimes you might find me making a comment um, in the comments or as part of the um, morning prayer, um, just because sometimes it's quite important to pick up on things and not leave them hanging without, um, without, without query. Equally, the beautiful thing about the lectionary is sometimes by divine grace, something will be said which will be just the thing that you need to hear at the time. So um, so the lectionary is not a bad thing at all, but sometimes must be used with a little bit of due care and attention. OK, so then we've gone through the liturgy of the word, which is similar to what we do on, on the beginning of a Sunday. Um, and then we come into the intercessions. Oh, yes. Sorry. So we'll have we have the New Testament reading. Then we come into the responsory, which changes for the seasons. Then we have the Gospel Canticle, which in the morning is always the Benedictus, which is the Song of Zechariah found in the Gospel of Luke. And in the evening is always the Magnificat, which is the Song of Mary, also found in the Gospel of Luke, which is, of course, also where the Nunc Dimittis, which is what we use at Compline, can be found um, in the Gospel of Luke. It is another of the canticles. 
So we always say the Benedictus and it is the most glorious, glorious um, thing to, to set your day by. It just reminds you, um, yeah, it just reminds you of everything that was seen and known about Christ and um, has, has continued on in, in a way of embracing our faith and reminding us uh, to where it points. So we say the Benedictus, then we come to the intercessions, the prayers are offered now, um, we have uh, recently, brilliantly, um, managed to have a prayer diary created for our parish, which offers us some particular intercessions for every day of the um, week. And the beauty of these is that it reminds us um, of our local community, but also of our place in the wider church. I and mean, it gives us an opportunity, uh, just as we will be praying for them, they will be praying for us. At times we will come up on their prayer lists and it kind of, you know, that sense of binding us together in prayer that we've so valued with one another. Well, actually, this is doing that with us and the wider church. So it's remarkably important. We also have the bulletin sheet here um, in St Peter's. Um, which has the um, individual intercessions, especially for those who have been unwell and asked for the prayers of the church. And at morning prayer, we try and pray for all of those. However, if you are saying the prayers by yourself um, and struggling to know what words to use, there are in this book some lovely cycles of intercessions. So it says um, the prayers on pages 146 to 147 may be used. Now, this is where having an extra bookmark comes in handy. So if we turn to here, 147, you will see um, some suggested cycles of prayers so that you can pray for the various and different needs of um, the world. But also some forms of intercession look suitable for morning prayer suitable for evening prayer, suitable for general use. Like so you get some that are fuller, some that are shorter. And you are very and then of course you get seasonal variations which remind us of where the gospel is sent pointing us towards um, through these seasons. And what the mood of those seasons might be is then reflected in our intercessions. So those set prayers are there. Equally, if you're praying by yourself and actually you are much more comfortable with using your own words, then it's absolutely fine to use your own words too, or even just to sit in silence. Because we will be praying these prayers out loud um, on Facebook Live, then we will probably use the fuller set of intercessions with the specific um, petitions that um, are on our prayer diaries. But if you're praying at home, it's absolutely fine to pray for those that you personally know or to perhaps use generalised intercessions that scoop up the whole of the church and the whole of your community. Um, there, are, there are no rules with prayer. There are forms which um, we hope keep us all on the same track so that when we do gather together, we know what we're doing and where we're going. But these are not hard and fast rules. And the very fact that we're consecrating the beginning of our day to God and um, offering to him all that is to unfold in front of us is in itself the most crucial prayer. So after the prayers, we um, may use these responses, um, but you can use other ones if you wish to or none at all. And then we have the collect um, and the collect of the day or the following is said. Now, what this book also does, which is quite lovely, is to give some variations. Hang on, let me just find it. Sorry. So this is why I wasn't quite prepared. So this gives us variations for the seasons. So um, the end of the prayers is uh, much the same as it always will be. There'll be the collect of the day, um, which you, which generally is the collect that was said on the Sunday as part of Mass. We tend to use that through the week and it's kind of lovely because the collect, and I don't know whether this is the strict meaning of the term the collect, but um, it acts to collect all of us up in the same place. It's kind of like a shared prayer that collects us all. That's the way I think about it. And so the fact that we use the collect that collects us into the prayers that were said at Mass earlier in the week um, has a kind of lovely poetry to it. Then we say the Lord's Prayer. And then, of course, we have the conclusion. And this is one of the seasonal variations. So later on in your book, so 
but um, this weekend we're finishing off epiphany season so I'll show you just because we are in epiphany season where that would be found so just after Christmas sorry I'm getting confused with Advent um, so here we are morning prayer for epiphany season and as you see it takes a very similar form but just there are some variations so it may be that the prayer of thanksgiving is slightly different um, the canticle may be slightly different the responses around the benedictus the refrains just little pieces however we on monday we will be back in ordinary time so we will revert to ordinary time which is on where my purple ribbon is form one on page two morning prayer in ordinary time now for those of you who perhaps are wondering about all of these seasons this is the general kind of guide so we're just coming out of christmas tide um, which includes epiphany and then we have a tiny slice of ordinary time before we go into lent and then we'll go into Easter tide and Pentecost. And then we have this huge amount of ordinary time here. And what's really interesting, and actually I only learned this very recently, is that there are some people who say that this part of the liturgical year is all about Jesus Christ. And this part of the liturgical year is all about ourselves. So this is where we grow in understanding who Jesus Christ was. And this is where we grow in understanding in who Jesus Christ makes us. A really interesting way of putting it. Um, but bro broadly speaking, that is the year that we will be keeping and that you will find um, in the book and that we will follow. But if you're following us on the daily prayers, then um, you will be guided, hopefully, to where the right page numbers are. Uh, but don't be daunted by the book. Um, explore it and use it. Um, and for those who have got the Compline book, you will see that I've done it very similarly. So we have got this is we have the, the main liturgy which in its raw form is set for ordinary time, but the seasonal variations can be found. So there are daily variations and seasonal variations, which can be found later on. And again, whoever's leading Compline in the evenings will um, guide you to the right pages, um, or otherwise just explore and feel free to use it. Again, uh, these are guides and ways of just keeping us on track so that we have a sense of collegiality in our prayers but if you're praying by yourself, then you can uh, dip in and dip out um, as you wish to. So that is my promised guide to the Purple Prayer Book, for which there will be a link in the video for you to be able to look up. And to a quick guide to the Compline Book, which if you haven't got one of these, there are a few copies in the porch at St Peter's. But I'm also very happy to send this out either by PDF if you don't wish to buy the purple book, then please know that you can also use the apps which are um, freely available from the Church of England. And I'll put those links in the video too. I hope that that has been helpful. If you have any other questions, then uh, please don't hesitate to shout. Um, but otherwise, I am delighted that our prayer life is evolving and developing in this way and that we all now have this shared text that will see us through the whole of the year. And I hope that you value this sense of praying together um, as much as, as, as so many of us do. Thanks ever so much and God bless you. And uh, yes, let's, uh, let's keep praying and bring ourselves before the Lord our God, not only for ourselves, but for each other. God bless. Thank you. Bye bye.